Hello viewers, welcome to my channel. And today's topic is pelvic inflammatory disease, uh, which is non -so also known as uh, PID, you know. Uh, but before starting, I would like to request you to like, subscribe and share these videos to support this channel, you know. Uh, and if you need more information about any disease, any medical condition, you can visit my website, which is www.diseasesandtreatment.com. And the link is just below this video in the description area. So you can click that link to visit the website. Now we come to the topic, what is pelvic inflammatory disease, you know. You know, it is an infection of the reproductive organs uh, in women, you know. And the pelvis is the uh, lower abdomen and it includes uh, fallopian tubes, ovaries, cervix and the uterus, you know. And uh, this condition is common and it affects about uh, millions of the women in worldwide, you know. So there are several different types of the bacteria that can cause the pelvic inflammatory disease, uh, including the same bacteria that cause the sexually transmitted infections, you know, uh, like uh, gonorrhea or maybe chlamydia, you know. So uh, what commonly occurs is that uh, the bacteria first enter the vagina causing an infection, you know, and uh, as the time passes, the infection can move into the pelvic organs, you know. So initial point of entry is the uh, vaginal opening, you know. And uh, it can become extremely dangerous, even life-threatening, you know, uh, if the infection spreads to your blood, you know. And uh, it can lead to the septic shock, you know. So it is a life-threatening condition. And if you suspect that you may have infection, you should see your doctor as soon as possible. Now, the risk factors for the pelvic inflammatory disease uh, increases if you have uh, chlamydia or gonorrhea, which are sexually transmitted infections, you know. And uh, you can develop the pelvic inflammatory disease without having the sexually transmitted infections, you know, even. And the other factors that can cause the pelvic uh, inflammatory disease, uh, they are uh, like having sex and being under the age of 25, having sex with different people or multiple sexual partners, uh, unproductive uh, uh, sexual activity like without condoms or using intrauterine devices to prevent the pregnancy or uh, Douching and having the history of pelvic inflammatory diseases, you know. So these are the uh, risk factors, you know. Well, you know, some women with the pelvic inflammatory disease don't have any symptoms. Uh, but for the women who do have the symptoms, they may include uh, pain in the lower abdomen, you know. Uh, painful uh, uh, sex, you know. A fever, which is a sign of infection, you know. And pain in the upper abdomen. Uh, irregular bleeding and increased or the foul smelling vaginal discharge you know, and tiredness so these are the common symptoms you know and uh, the pelvic inflammatory disease can cause mild to moderate pain you know and uh, some women have the severe pain and symptoms such as uh, sharp pain in the abdomen you know fat, fainting or vomiting or nausea you know and high fever than 101 degree Fahrenheit you know which is sign of infection again you know and if you have the severe symptoms, you should call uh, the doctor immediately or go to the emergency room straight away, you know, because it could be the sign of any septic shock or septicemia, you know, which is a life-threatening condition. So uh, don't delay, just uh, uh, call the emergency services straight away, you know. Well, your doctor may be able to diagnose uh, this condition after hearing your symptoms. And in most cases, your doctor will run the tests like pelvic exam, like cervical culture and the urine tests, you know, to identify any kind of the infection, you know. And uh, if your doctor determines that you have the pelvic inflammatory disease, uh, he may run more tests, you know, uh, like pelvic ultrasound or endometrial biopsy or maybe laparoscopy, you know. So this way, your doctor will be able to diagnose the underlying condition which is causing the pelvic inflammatory disease, you know. Now, once diagnosed, then what are the treatment options is another question, you know. You know, your doctor will likely have to take 
advi- prescribed you like uh, antibiotics you know uh, to treat this infection and uh, because your doctor may not know the type of the bacteria that is causing uh, this uh, infection you know so they may give you uh, two different types of the antibiotics to treat the variety of uh, and bacteria as are known as a broad spectrum antibiotics you know and within a few days of uh, starting the treatment your symptoms may improve or may go away you know uh, however you should finish your medication uh, and complete the course you know and even if you feel better don't stop taking the antibiotics you know complete its course because stopping the medication early can cause the infection to return you know and uh, Uh, if you are sick or if you are pregnant uh, and cannot swallow the pills or have an abscesses like uh, uh, in your pelvis you know your doctor may send you to the hospital for treatment in that case you know uh, where you will receive the antibiotics intravenously you know? and uh, you know pelvic inflammatory disease may require surgery you know and this is rare and is only necessary if there is any abscess you know uh in your pelvis uh, which ruptures or your doctor suspects that abscess will rupture you know and it can be necessary if the infection does not respond to treatment you know so in that case hospitalization will be required you know and uh, the bacteria that cause the pelvic inflammatory disease uh, can spread through the sexual contact you know so if you are sexually active your partner should also get the treatment for the pelvic inflammatory disease you know so it's very important that you inform any your previous partners you know if you have been diagnosed with the pelvic inflammatory disease so they can get the treatment to stop spreading these bacteria to other people you know so it's very important uh, well there are certain steps you can take to prevent the pelvic inflammatory disease like uh, uh practice a safe sex you know uh, avoid touching getting tested for sexually transmitted infections and uh, wiping from uh, front to back after using the bathroom you know rather than from back to front you know so always uh, if you are a female uh, you should make a habit that you always wipe from front to back not back to front you know Thank you very much for watching this video. If you need more information about any disease, any medical condition, you can visit my website which is www.diseasesintreatment.com. Thank you and goodbye.